Hello and welcome to The Voice, a DPS Wealth Management Insights podcast. Each week, we handpick a hot topic in the financial markets and get to the heart of it. This week, the hot topic in focus is something close to us, none other than Singapore itself. With the circuit breaker extended, what is the outlook for Singapore's economy and which sectors will bear the brunt? Let's take a look. Singapore now has the highest number of COVID-19 cases in Southeast Asia and the fifth highest in Asia. The Singapore government recently announced a four-week extension of the circuit breaker, taking it to the 1st of June, a necessary step to contain the outbreak. The relief measures and a solidarity package will help, but some businesses with weaker financial standings may not survive this crisis. In light of the downside risks, we have downgraded our full-year growth forecast significantly from minus 2.8% to minus 5.7%. Compared to the previous forecast, the belly of this U-shaped trajectory is now deeper. GDP growth year-on-year could fall below minus 7% in the coming two quarters and will likely remain in negative territory till the second quarter of 2021. This will be the darkest year for the Singapore economy since independence. From a sectoral perspective, apart from the information and communication sector, almost all sectors will be impacted. Some of the most badly hit businesses would include hotels and restaurants, construction, transport services, wholesale and retail trade. These industries will see a slower recovery after the circuit breaker is over. That said, economic growth could be pushed further into the red under a few scenarios. Firstly, if Singapore fails to contain the spread of the virus even after the circuit breaker and extends it further. Secondly, if another wave of infections should emerge across the globe and countries are forced to reimpose lockdowns for a longer period. In such risk scenarios, headline GDP growth for 2020 could potentially fall to as low as minus 7.8%. The government has rolled out three separate stimulus packages thus far. The Unity, Resilience and Solidarity packages totaling $63.7 billion. Monetary policy has also been aggressively eased in a bid to cushion the economic fallout. Without these measures, the economic pain could be even more acute. One of the key thrusts of the fiscal measures is about saving jobs and helping local workers. The job support scheme was announced to defray manpower costs for companies in a bid to alleviate the risk of unemployment. Indeed, retrenchments should only be an option when all alternatives have dried up. Despite these efforts, a significant number of jobs could still be lost as the economy dips into an unprecedented deep recession. Companies may have to shed more headcount to bring down manpower costs and some companies with weaker financial standings could go belly up. Total retrenchments could potentially rise to 45,600, far higher than any of the past recessions. This will push resident unemployment rate to 4.2% by year-end, while overall unemployment rate could rise to 3.6%. There is no doubt that the COVID-19 pandemic has wreaked havoc on the global economy. Growth prospects are now sharply off-tangent. Even if Singapore succeeds in bringing down the number of local cases, it will still be a long way before economic activities go back to normal. We believe policies will remain supportive and even bold to cushion the economic fallout as recovery will be tepid. The path ahead will be arduous and we need to be resilient to ride through this time of volatility. Thank you so much for tuning in to The Voice, a DBS Wealth Management Insights podcast. We hope these episodes provide deeper insight as to what's going on in the financial markets and what you should do to maximize your portfolio. For more insights into how we can help you pursue your financial goals, do contact your relationship manager or visit DBS Research linked in your email. Thanks again for joining us and we'll catch you again on another episode of The Voice.